Robin and Hood by Papa Stash. It was early spring in Sherwood when a band of merry mice found a baby robin on the forest floor. The poor robin had fallen out of its nest, and since his mommy was nowhere around, the mice took care of the robin and fed him lots of worms. Robin grew into a beautiful bird, and his best friend was Stubbs. You know it's hard to tell the difference between mice, because they all look alike. But Stubbs was easy to recognize. He had his tail cut off. Stubbs was with the three blind mice, Hickory, Dickory, and Doc, when they met the farmer's wife. But for some reason, Stubbs never made it into the nursery rhyme. Robin and Stubbs were inseparable. Even when they played tag, they were close to each other. Later that spring, Robin and Stubbs went into the newly plowed cornfield. No corn was growing yet, but there were plenty of worms to eat. Robin spotted some things standing in the field that he had never seen before, and he asked Stubbs, What are those ugly-looking things? Stubbs told him, Those were scarecrows that Farmer McDonald puts up all around the cornfield to scare the crows. But they don't work, because nothing scares the crows. A few months passed, and the corn was ripe. That's when the birds arrived, like they always did, every summer. But this summer was different. A murder of rough crows took over the cornfield. A murder is what you call a group of crows. The leader of the murder was the evilest of all the crows. His name was Boss. And before any blackbird could eat any corn, it had to go and meet the boss. He told every blackbird, if you want to eat in my cornfield, you must bring me a corn tax of five kernels of corn every day. And if you don't pay, then my friend, no mercy, will pluck all your feathers off, one by one. And so, the first thing every morning, the blackbirds would line up to pay the boss his corn tax. One morning, a blackbird forgot to pay boss his five kernels of corn. Boss ordered no mercy to pluck the poor blackbird for not paying his corn tax. And for a bird, that's the worst thing that can happen. Because if a bird doesn't have feathers, it can't fly. And if it can't fly, it can't eat. And you know what happens if you don't eat. No mercy started plucking the blackbird. But before he could finish, the blackbird ran from the cornfield with no mercy hot on his tail, or what was left of it. Luckily for the blackbird, he ran into Robin. Robin took the blackbird into the forest where he would be safe from no mercy. The blackbird told Robin and the band of merry mice what had happened and why no mercy was chasing him. Robin felt sorry for the blackbird. So early the next morning, before the crows woke up, Robin flew over the cornfield looking for Boss's stockpile of corn tacks. And when he found it, he flew back and told the mice where to go to get Boss's corn. The band of merry mice ran into the cornfield, found Boss's stockpile of corn tacks, picked up all the corn kernels they could carry, and raced back into the forest to feed the poor blackbird. But one mouse didn't make it back. No Mercy grabbed the mouse by its tail and took it to Boss, and asked him if he wanted a mouse for his breakfast. Boss told the mouse that he was lucky, because he wouldn't be eaten today. He had other plants for the mouse. He told the mouse to go back and tell all the other mice that if they wanted to eat in his cornfield, they too had to pay him a corn tax of five kernels a day. The terrified mouse ran back to Robin and told him what the boss had said about paying a corn tax. Robin got angry, and he went to see the boss. Robin told the boss that the cornfield didn't belong to the crows, but boss just laughed at him and ordered no mercy to grab Robin for a plucking, but Robin was fast enough to fly away. No mercy almost caught Robin, but Robin flew into the forest where he was safe. Crows don't fly in forests because hanging tree branches could hurt their wings. Crows only like flying in wide open spaces. No mercy flew back to boss and told him he lost Robin when he went into the forest. Boss was furious, and he sent out a call to all his crows to be on the lookout for Robin. 
The crows flew nonstop all day searching for Robin, until one crow spotted a falcon with huge eyes flying high above them. The crow began frantically calling, Cow, 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 and soon that's all you heard over the cornfield, as hundreds of crows began, Cow, cow, cowing. It was their warning to take cover. And that's exactly what they did. All the crows quickly flew down and hid in between the corn stalks, hoping the falcon with the big eyes wouldn't see them. The falcon heard the caw, caw, caw of the crows and flew down like a bullet. But he was heading straight into the forest where he flew into a tree. And it fell, not the tree, the falcon with the big eyes. Robin and Stubbs were surprised. Hickory, Dickory, and Doc didn't see what happened, but they sure heard the loud thud. The falcon didn't move. It just laid there. Doc checked to see if it was alive. He hit the falcon's beak a few times with his walking stick, and it must have done something because the falcon stood up, and he was still a little wobbly when Robin approached him. Didn't you see the tree? Robin asked. No, answered the falcon. But you have the biggest eyes I've ever seen on a bird, said Robin. These aren't my eyes. This is the thing they put on me before I fly. And then he explained to Robin how he was taken out to fly when he heard a loud bang and got scared and flew away. Well, why didn't you take it off so you could see where you were going, asked Robin. I can't, said the bird. It's tied in back and I can't reach it. Robin and Stubbs untied the thing that was on the falcon's head. Well, it was actually Stubbs who chewed off the leather strap, and Robin pulled it off. Finally, the falcon could see. What's your name? asked Robin. I don't have a name, said the falcon. All I know is when they take me out to fly, they say, get the hood. Then we'll call you Hood, if that's okay with you, said Robin. That's fine with me, said Hood. How can I thank you for taking the thing off my head? Now, you don't have to thank us, but you could help us. How can I help you, said Hood. Robin told Hood about Boss and his corn tax, and Hood told Robin not to worry. He would go with Robin and Stubbs to see Boss. Robin wasn't afraid of Boss this time, not with Hood standing behind him. Again, Robin told Boss that it wasn't right to collect the corn tax from the blackbirds and mice. Boss just laughed again. Hood didn't laugh. He walked right up to Boss and told him to stop charging blackbirds and mice at corn tax or else. Or else what, said the boss. Or else I'll pluck your feathers off and your buddies too, said Hood. Boss just laughed and said, maybe Hood could. But he couldn't pluck the entire murderous feathers. And then boss cried out as loud as he could. Come, come, capture, capture, come, come. And from every corner of the cornfield came the crows. Hood knew he had no chance by himself against all the crows. So Hood flew away. Robin tried to fly away too, but no mercy grabbed him before he could flap his wings. Stubbs was lucky. He ran away. A black cloud of crows chased Hood across the sky. Lucky for Hood, he flew faster than the murder of crows following him. Meanwhile, Boss had tied Robin up to a scarecrow. And Boss told Robin, See, you can't trust anybody. And wait till my boys bring back Hood. It'll be fun plucking you too. Stubbs ran back and told the mice that Robin had been caught, and they had to do something to help their friend. All the mice agreed to do whatever it took to free Robin. Stubbs told them to wait at the edge of the forest for him. I'll be back, he told them, and then he ran away. Stubbs raced across the cornfield. No mouse had ever run as fast as Stubbs did on that day. Maybe if he had run that fast when he met the farmer's wife, he'd still have his tail. He ran into Farmer McDonald's barn and told his cousins he needed their help. Stubbs led the mice and his cousins to Boss, and Stubbs threatened him to release Robin or else. Boss just laughed again and said, Or else what? I eat mice like you, he said. Stubbs was defiant. He walked right up to Boss and told him, You might eat some of us, but you can't eat all of us. Look behind you. When Boss turned around and saw the wave of huge barn rats, he got scared and flew up on top of the scarecrow. Then he snarled, Wait until my boys come back, and then we'll eat all of you, rats included. 
Just as he said that, no mercy returned and told the boss that they had lost Hood. And that Hood found a lot of friends. And now they were heading this way. No mercy screamed, boss, we got to get out of here and fast. Look. When boss looked, he saw his murder of crows being chased across the fields and sky by Hood and lots of his falcon friends. Boss and No Mercy flew away as fast as they could. Stubbs untied Robin, the band of mice were merry, dancing around as happy as could be, and their rat cousins went back to old MacDonald's barn. The reign of terror was finally over. The evil crows were gone, and they never came back to that cornfield in Sherwood again. And from that day on, the blackbirds and mice ate corn for free. Robin asked Hood, if a group of crows is called a murder, then what is a group of falcons called? Hood told him that he didn't know. Stubbs smiled and said that a group of falcons must be called a nothing, because nothing scares the crows. Do you remember how many different scarecrows there were? Don't peek, just take a guess. Did you guess nine? I hope you enjoyed my story, Robin and Hood. You can see more of my stories on my Facebook page at Papa Stash the Storyteller or my YouTube channel, Papa Stash. Thanks again for watching and share it with your family and friends.